Uh, if you're just coming online, uh, make sure you've got um, the advanced plotting script that I posted to the course website earlier today. Uh, so that's what I've got open here. And that's all you'll need. Um, so why don't I do this? Uh, I'll do my my favorite uh, multiple choice poll here. Uh, go ahead and uh, answer that poll when you're all set and ready to go. Okay, <clears throat> um, maybe just one or two more people coming online, but uh, it's 1.02, so I think I'll get going. Um, let me close this poll. Uh, all right, so today <clears throat> um, we're going to be uh, working with the lattice package again, uh, mainly with that function xy plot that we saw last time. And uh, we're going to be answering a few of the, the questions that uh, some of you have asked along the way. And I, you know, in some cases told you to just hold on for a sec because um, I just want to explain the concepts first rather than, you know, getting uh, too much into detail about specific types of plots. Um, the, uh, the, one of the, the bigger uh, concepts that we're going to deal with today is, and actually let me jump to the book real quickly here. Um, let's see. I know I have it nearby. Um, just while I'm looking for this, one of the, the things we'll be jumping to is the panel function. And uh, you've seen, well, we haven't seen the panel function yet. We've seen xy plot. And what, uh, what you hopefully saw a little bit already is that um, xy plot makes it pretty easy to kind of get going quickly, make some good plots quickly. Uh, it has a lot of nice defaults, uh, which is important. That's part of getting stuff done quickly. But, um, but we all know that defaults aren't always going to work for every type of problem we come across. And so part of what I, you know, part of what hopefully has been emphasized so far is that it's very convenient to use, but we're going to talk today about how XY plot's very extensible. So it's not just the, um, the baked in type plots that you can use. You can extend it in a lot of different ways. And most of that extensibility comes from knowing how to work with the panel function. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to work with a data set that's very similar to uh, the one that I used last time. We're just going to create it on the fly here. This is a little bit different. I added in another, um, another variable. Uh, I think it's just gender was not in the previous data set, but it's basically, if you take a look, do run that uh, chunk number two, do head on dat, and you can see it's, um, yeah, data set with subject, month, dose, exposure, response, uh, a character version of the dose variable, and then uh, I've added in a sex uh, gender variable as well. Um, don't want to forget to, to uh, source the lattice package, of course. And now what I'm going to start with here is uh, just showing you a plot pretty similar to, and maybe we made this exact plot last time, I don't remember exactly, but um, if I run chunk number four here, you'll see a plot that you know, again, essentially we learned how to make something like this last time. 
um, in, in chapter two. Uh, and what I wanted to show you in chunk number four here is that uh, I've added an additional argument here where I've said panel equals panel dot xy plot. That happens to be the default value for the panel argument. Uh, so even if we had commented that out, we would get the same behavior. Um, okay, but what I want to show you is how we can take we we can change away from that default value. Um, and so that's what we'll be talking about today. So what does that panel function do? Uh, basically, the panel function is a set of, it's, it's a function, first of all, and the function, its job is to draw stuff in each panel. So in this figure that we made down here, there's four panels, and that means the panel function was called four times. Uh, once for month zero, once for month three, and so forth. Uh, and in this case, the default value here, panel.xyplot, that is a set of drawing instructions that basically just makes a scatter plot within each panel. Uh, we can look at the definition for panel.xyplot. It's a little bit it's not terribly complicated, but um, it's, it's more than we want to dive into right at the moment. Um, the bottom line, you know, the point is it's a, it's a function, okay? That's really all you need to know for now. Um, now where it gets interesting, uh, actually, yeah, first of all, let me say this. So if we go to chunk number five here, um, there are, other uh, kind of uh, there are other panel functions that that ship with the lattice package that are uh, already um, already defined for you. Uh, one of them is panel.los, and I'll just show you quickly what that does. Um, it's going to use the same data, same layout, and all that, but it's going to change. It's it's providing a different set of instructions for what to draw within each panel, and in this case, it's doing a, a low s uh, smoother through the points in each panel. Uh, now, this, if I can anticipate what some of you might want to ask right off the bat here, is what if I want to do both? Um, and uh, you know, panel dot low s. You might think it's strange that it doesn't add the points, but uh, the notion here is that really most of these uh, pre-baked panel functions, they're, not, they're often not very useful on their own. Um, what you want to do is use them in combination with each other, and that's going to mean writing your own panel function. So I've done that down here in, uh, in chunk number six. I've, uh, and, and you know a little bit now about writing functions from um, the chapter that Tim covered. Uh, I wrote my own function here that takes uh, a value x, a value y, uh, and those are, let me, let me pause on those two arguments first. Most panel functions are going to take a, um, take at least those two arguments. Um, or really the minimum is that it would take one called x. Um, but what's going to happen is this, this function, we're not going to call this function my.panel. We're not going to call it directly. It's going to be called by the higher level function xyplot. Um, and if I can kind of jump ahead to the punchline here, uh, well, first let me go ahead and, and source this. Um, if you look in chunk number seven, now that I've defined this function, my panel, my dot panel, 
what chunk number seven is going to do is it's it's going to create the same layout and stuff, uh, and then for the drawing within each panel, it's going to call the function my.panel. So we're not again we're not calling my.panel directly. We're leaving it to the xy plot function to make all those calls to the my.panel function. Uh, let me go ahead and do that, and then I'll talk a little bit more about how this works. So. Um, all right, so now you can see the result. Now we're getting uh, both the, the, plot, the points and the, the smooth. And so if you look up in the function, in the my.panel definition here, um, the, uh, uh, that, that makes sense because I've got two, you know, I'm calling, I'm making a call to both panel.xyplot and to panel.loS. Uh, so that much makes sense. Um, you might, if you think about it, you might say, all right, well, how does, you know, we define things in terms of x and y, but how did xy plot know what to pass in as the x and y values? Um, well, it just always handles that the same way. Whatever variable you've got here to the left of the tilde in your formula, that's going to get passed in. That's going to get passed on to the panel function as the the y vector, and whatever you've got here is going to get passed down to the panel function as x. Um, so you can always write your panel function as a function of x and y, or sometimes just of x. Um, and that's where the x and y is going to come from. You can also, like we did here, you can also add some additional arguments to your function. And uh, in this case, I just, this is kind of a silly example, but I made a default point color of blue, default uh, lot, low S line color of red, and I pass those things in down here. Um, so that's, that's, how, uh, that's how we got the colors that we did in the, in the plot. The thing, no, one important thing to notice here is uh, that the return value for this function, this my.panel function, is null. Uh, and I see uh, Giselle just asked that. Okay, so that's a good question. Um, we could have actually not specified any return value. We could, I could comment this out, and it would work fine. But if I did that, implicitly the return value would still be null. Um, and so I'm just making it explicit here that they're really, really what this is saying uh, is that there's no return, there's no true return value for the function. Uh, in other words, um, you know, when you have a function like log, okay, the return value for uh, the log function is going to be some some number, right? Uh, and that's the reason you call the log function is to get that result. The reason you call the or the reason that the my dot panel gets called is not really to return a result. It's just to do drawing, and and that drawing is what we call uh, side effects. And I might seem like a semantic distinction. It is sort of a semantic distinction, but uh, it's just worth understanding that this, what, what this line does is it creates side effects, which means it's kind of like just adding ink to the paper, okay? And that's what this does too. It just creates side effects. Neither one of these really create a value to be returned. So the return value, uh, whether we say this, whether we have this last line or not, the return value is going to be null. Okay, I see another question here. Uh, can we not avoid writing function and get the plot with both? So I, get, I think that question is, can we avoid writing a function and get the plot with both low S line and dots? 
yes, and uh, actually, not really is my answer to that. Um, what we could have done is we could have defined that function on the fly, okay? Uh, we'll see another example of this in a second, but I'll go ahead and, and, and do the example here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this uh, xy plot code here. Um, and instead of saying my.panel here, I'm just going to put in the function definition I don't need this comma anyway. I'm going to put in the function definition directly. So all this stuff. So this isn't really, it's, it's not much of a time saver here, but uh, maybe it, if nothing else, it might uh, help you understand how things work. And actually the truth is that, that this uh, defining function on the, on the fly is a bit of a time saver because what I'll typically do is um, you know I might make a plot like this so let me go ahead and execute this make sure I got it right. Uh, oh okay. Um, my, is that the what I actually called that? My point color. Something got corrupted there. Point, okay. Uh, so I see the question, we, can we just directly write both panel.xyplot and panel.lois in the panel options? Uh, no, you can't. You have to define it as a, a function. At least, uh, it's the only, this is the only way that I'm aware of. <clears throat> uh, let, me, let me continue with this example though, because it, uh, I think it, it's worth, uh, uh, actually I don't, oh I see, okay, now it should work. It's worth just showing you how I, how I typically actually do this in practice. I think how most of us do this in practice is we will define these panel functions on the fly. Uh, a disadvantage to that is then you end up re rewriting the code every time for you know, every, um, every new plot you make. Um, but an advantage is you can kind of tinker with it a lot more easily, like maybe I just decide on a spur of the moment decision that I don't want that low S line at all. So rather than going back and redefining the function, I can just comment out this one line and run the code again. And, and it makes it kind of easy to, to, uh, to change what you're plotting, okay? So, so that's the good and the bad of, of lattice. Uh, I think to one of the, in, in response to the questions here about do we really need to define a panel function. Uh, again, as far as I know, you do. And that, I, you know, I can see how that's a bit cumbersome. Uh, there's no question it's a bit cumbersome, but uh, it's also very um, tidy in a way. Um, because what you end up with here is everything gets kind of uh, uh, the whole set of plotting instructions is encapsulated in this one call to xy plot, as opposed to traditional graphics where you do things in layers. You know, you have one call that says plot, plot a point, and then you might have some other stuff, and then maybe you add a line. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it gets a little but there, there are advantages to have it, having everything kind of encapsulated in one function call here. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's pretty much the way it works. Uh, let me show you another example here. Um, for the most part, uh, mo most of what I do in any event with Lattice is actually using XYplot. 
uh, as, as my high level function. There are other um, high level lattice functions and we'll see one of them in a second. Um, but for the most part, you, you have in, an incredible amount of flexibility even if you just stick with xy plot as your, uh, as your high level function. And then most of the variation that, you, that I typically want to get, I can get by just manipulating the panel function. Having said that, uh, there are, as I said, there are other high level lattice functions. So one of them is, is histogram. Um, let's, just, let's just plot this first and then I can talk about how it works. Um, maybe I should have shown this first. So histogram, I could have just accepted the default, uh, the default panel function. So I'm going to comment out these lines. Uh, so this is, so by default, the, the panel function for histogram is one that's called, it's a pre-built function called panel.histogram. Uh, oh. and, and it would give you kind of what you probably expect, whoops. Um, sorry, I just deleted that code that I just used, but I think you can, uh, again, all I did was it's the same as what's here except commenting out this uh, specification of the panel function. Um, so again, there's a default panel function that goes with this high level lattice function. Um, and again, we can, we don't have to take that default if we don't want, we can, um, we can define our own panel function to get more, uh, more uh, customization. In this case, the customization that I got was I, I manually specified the breaks uh, for where, the, where the, the bins would begin and end. I said I wanted on the percent scale instead of the uh, density scale. And I added what's called a rug, which is uh, it's a handy little uh, feature a lot of the time. It's a little hard to see in this um, in this view, but if you look, maybe you can see it better on your own screen, there's there are blue tick marks uh, underneath the histogram showing each of the individual data points. Uh, that's called a rug. Alright, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about um, how information gets passed uh, passed into the panel function. Um, we're gonna, you know, I keep riffing on the same plot here. I hope you don't get the impression that that's these are the only types of plots you can make. My my emphasis here is not trying to show you every single type of plot you can make. It's showing you how the data gets passed through here, and that gives you. Um, well, hopefully that'll give you a better, you know, better empower you to kind of make your own extensions of these. Uh, okay, I see the question, what are the defaults for the breaks? I don't know, but if you, so the question is, you know, I specified these breaks up here, but what are the defaults? Um, I don't know, but here's how I would hunt that down. Um, well, the first thing I do, I would do, I guess, is I would see if, there is, um, if you go to the end of the help on XY plot, uh, you will see, um, well, you won't see panel.histogram. So let's go look for that. Um, C 
So breaks are the breakpoints for the histogram. It doesn't really tell you how they're made. Let's look at the help for histogram. And here we go. When unspecified, the default is to use, um, this means, uh, actually, what does that mean? Seek link. Oh, this is this is what's more often going to be. So this is what gets applied if, if X is a factor, but I don't. I wouldn't usually anticipate making a histogram with a factor variable. Uh, usually, you're going to be working with a numeric variable, and so there's another function um, do dot breaks, which uh, will figure out uh, what the breaks should be. And we could keep hunting here uh, and search for help on do.breaks, or we could just look at the definition for do.breaks. Um, and that would tell you how, they're, how they are uh, computed. I won't try to keep pursuing that example. I, I, if, if that's not enough information, just follow up offline and I can get you more detail. But um, that's how I would go about figuring out what the default breaks are. Uh, okay, is there an argument to let the scales for the histogram fluctuate? Yeah, I think um, we may have seen this, if I remember right, in, the, in an earlier chapter, but let me just uh, go ahead and answer that question anyway. So in this case, um, both the X and the Y values here are kind of, um, you might have a justification for wanting them to be different uh, within each panel. Um, so for example, if I want just the uh, y, val y axis to be computed separately for each one, the argument to use is scales, and then uh, scales can be a list. And in this case, if I want y to be free, I'm going to say y equals list, relation equals free. And if I did it for x, of course, that would free up x as well. But this should do the trick here. And it didn't seem, doesn't appear to be totally free, but now, so I'm not sure exactly what the logic is for picking these y scales, but you can see it in any event that they are computed in a way that's different for each panel. So it does, the Y scale does adapt to whatever's in each panel. So if the bars are taller, like this one, the Y axis will go up to 100. If they're shorter in this top one, it's only going up to 30. Okay, moving on. Um, I guess I spoke to some of this already. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'll skip over chunk nine because I think I already spoke to whatever I wanted to say with that. Um, what I'm gonna do here in chunk 10 is I'm gonna add one argument to my panel function. Uh, and then this is the famous dot, dot, dot argument that uh, Tim introduced you to. And if you already understand it perfectly based on, uh, on Tim's uh, presentation, that's great. If you don't, don't worry too much. It's, it, it is a concept that takes people sometimes a little while to, to wrap their heads around. Um, I just think of dot, the dot, dot, dot argument as like, it's like saying, whatever else I didn't think of. So keeping in mind now that, that my.panel is a function that's gonna get called by xyplot. So xyplot can pass a number of arguments to my.panel. It can pass x, it can pass y, it can pass arguments with these two names, and any other stuff that I want to pass down from xyplot to my.panel, I can kind of anticipate that as well with the dot dot dot. I think it 
let's just go ahead and do it and it might be clear in the context of this example. Um, so first let's redefine my.panel and now if you look in chunk number 11, um, let's again let's go ahead and evaluate it first and then talk about it. Um, what's different in this figure is I've got a dashed line and that was specified here using LTY equals 2. Uh, but what, and then what you should be thinking is, okay, I, I gave, I specified LTY equals 2. I specified that as an argument to XY plot. But how, how did my.panel know about this value? Because my.panel, the arguments up here, they don't include LTY. And yet somehow my.panel knew when it was, you remember my.panel did all the drawing here. Somehow it knew to use LTY equals two. Well that's because all, basically anything else here is also gonna get passed down into into the my dot the uh, in the call to my dot panel, oops. And typically, the scenario where that's useful is um, is is this is the scenario like this where my dot panel in turn calls another function. So there's three levels here, uh, and and typically you have you always have three levels when the dot if. This, the situation where the dot 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 argument is useful is when you've got really three nested levels of functions. At the highest level you've got xy plot, that's calling my.panel, and my.panel is calling a function inside of it, which is panel.los. And so in this case, we're trying to pass whatever, a bunch of stuff from the highest level function down to the lowest level function, panel.los, and we don't have to, we don't want that middle level function to really have to worry about what it is. It's just like whatever, whatever extra stuff we have that's specified up here, we're going to pass that down to panel.los. And so one of those things that's going to get passed down is this uh, LTY argument. Okay, so the question, will chunk 11 run if you don't put in the dot, dot, dot? Well, it'll run, but it won't, that's a good, good question actually. Um, it's, it's illustrative to try to, to do that. Um, it'll run, but it won't, um, I'm gonna resubmit chunk 10 and 11 here. It won't use dashed lines. Um, At least it shouldn't. Um, let me think here. Panel is my panel. Let me try that again. Oh, okay. I had an error when I tried to redefine my function. Um, I need to get rid of this comma here. So I'll redefine my function and remake the plot. Uh, oh, well, I guess there's two things I need to change. Um, I, I need to... Um, I need to also get rid of the dot dot dots here. Try one more time. Okay, so let's uh, let's think through what I just did here. I am still specifying at the high level call to xy plot. I'm still specifying lty equals two. But 
now we look at the result and we don't see LTY equals 2, we just see a straight line. That's because uh, XY plot called my dot panel, it gave it, uh, it was willing to give it all of this information, including LTY equals 2. But my dot panel now is saying, I don't have room for any extra information. All the only information I'm going to take from you, x y plot, is uh, I want give me a value for x, a value for y, a value for my point color and my low s color, and I don't have room for anything else. So, so you so x y plot may try to pass along these additional values, but my panel isn't isn't open for business for those things. Okay. So that's, that's where you need the dot, dot, dot. If you want to pass information from the high level call to the, to the lower level stuff. Um, it might seem like kind of a contrived example here, but you'll see that's, you're not going to, you're going to run into trouble if you don't understand that concept. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll, we'll hit on that again. Um, Let's see, I got another question here. Blue and red have been defined in my dot panel. Why do we need that again in the XY plot? Uh, actually, we, okay, so the question is, if I look up here in my dot panel, I already have default values for uh, my point color and my low s color. And so why would I need to define them again? Actually, you don't. Okay, so I could get rid of this here. Um, and the defaults will get used. Uh, the only time you would need to Specify them here is if you want if you, you don't like those defaults you don't you want maybe you want to switch it so I'll switch now the point color to red and the line color to blue and uh, that will override the default values that I had in my dot panel Yeah, and so uh, Jeffrey's asking, so basically the dot, dot, dot allows you to be able to specify other options later. Correct, yes. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, what I wanted to illustrate with this uh, chunk number 12 here is that uh, even though, as I said earlier, the point, the, the job of a panel function is just to draw stuff. That's true, that's its ultimate job. But nonetheless, within a panel function, if you want, there's no reason you can't do computations like taking the mean of, of the x values or uh, taking the quantiles. In this case, I'm taking the fifth and the 95th percentiles of the x values. And the reason that's useful is then, you know, often what you want to add to your plot is like in this case, reference lines. So I'm gonna add a reference line, a vertical reference line at the mean X value. And I'm also gonna add vertical reference lines at the fifth and 95th percentile. And there's ways of passing like these uh, these values of where I'm going to add these reference lines, uh, I could have passed them in from outside of the function, but a lot of times it's easier to just compute those on the fly um, because the panel function, it's already, the lattice function, I should say, is already kind of doing the subsetting for you. So you've already, let me, let me just make the plot before I keep talking here. Um, what you'll see here is like the, the solid vertical line is at the mean, right? And that's computed 
It's computing the means separately within each panel, which is what you'd expect. Um, and that's, my point is just that that's a handy thing. It means you don't have to go and, and uh, not that it would be that hard anyway, but you don't have to go and compute all those means separately for under each of these conditions. Um, the data is already sort of, you know, by the time this panel function gets called, the data's already been subsetted for each panel. So you can just take the mean values and the quantiles and or whatever else you want to do. You can just do um, computations based on the values that are going to be used in each panel. Um, so that's that's a handy thing to understand. Um, let me see. I'm going to give you a quick uh, exercise, actually. I'll give you a few minutes to work on it. Uh, maybe before I do that, any, any more questions on what we've covered so far? All right. So the exercise uh, is I'm going to create another copy of the DAT data frame. And I'm going to, in this new copy of DAT, I'm going to take some values of the response and I'm going to set them to missing, to, to NA. So I'm going to make some missing data here. Uh, I'm not sure if you just do head on DAT2, you don't see any missing values, but trust, trust me, they're in there. Let's see how many. Uh, we can just print this whole thing out. Um, if you scroll through, you'll see some NA values in the response column. Um, and what I want to do is, let's see how I phrased this in the book. I'm sure I phrased it better in writing than I will if I try to wing it here. Um, Okay, so I'm on page 73, section 5.5.1, exercise, visualizing missing data. Uh, and I say here, uh, it might sound like a strange thing to visualize missing data, uh, but it's, it's actually very, it's a very important thing a lot of the time. And what I mean by visualizing missing data is, in this case, uh, well actually, in a lot of cases, you have one variable with some missing values, but that variable is associated with another variable which may have fewer missing values or may have no missing values. Um, and by looking at the association between uh, those two variables, it, it allows you to say something about where the missing values are, and that can be important. Um, Anyway, the, the, the thing that I want you to try to make is this figure here in the middle of page 74. And so what have we got here? We've got the Y variable's response, the X variable's exposure. I'm conditioning on dose. I just think that's actually dose two is the character version that you can use. Um, and within each panel, uh, I've got a scatter plot. Well, that part's easy. But the thing I want you to add now that we have these missing values in the response is add, add a rug, but only add a rug, uh, add rugs so that the tick marks are only at the exposures for which response is missing. Okay? So, in other words, what I want this plot to be telling me is that this one value here where the exposure was around 20 in the 30 milligram group, that means there was one record where the exposure was 20 and the response was missing. Uh, and all these other points, if I have the complete data, if I have the observed response, then I don't want to put a, a rug tick mark. I only want the rug tick marks to go where the response value is missing, okay? Let me, um, 
I'm gonna pause the recording for a second and give you, uh, let's say, uh, four minutes to try to do that. Okay, so just a little bit before 150, we will. Uh, I'll, I'll tr please remind me to resume the recording. Uh, I'm not going anywhere, so if you have questions, uh, just feel free to um, submit them and I can help you work through it. But uh, give that a try on your own for a second, okay? All right, pause. Okay, um, so you might not have had time to work that all the way through, uh, but I just wanted to give you a chance to at least try to wrap your head around it on your own. Um, before I, uh, you know, it's always, it's always easier to understand the solution once you see it rather than uh, um, trying to come up with it on your own. But unfortunately, in real life, you always have to come up with it on your own. So uh, anyway, here's what I would do. Um, first of all, you know, the... Uh, the core part of this is, is pretty easy, right? You should just, uh, at least, you know, hopefully it should be easy after chapter two. So we want, to, we can use xy plot because it's basically a scatter plot. We can plot response versus exposure. We're conditioning on, it's dose two, right? Conditioning on dose two. Uh, the data is DAP2, and as far as the scatter plot goes, that should be plenty, right? So let's just make sure that works, though. Uh, well, we got to change the layout. All right, so that looks fine. Um, now, how about those rugs? So what we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna make our own panel function. Again, you pretty much, you can always start out this way, X, Y, and it never hurts to add in some dots, okay? And now we're gonna put a function definition here uh, we can start, we're still going to want the scatter plot, so let's go ahead and do that. Panel.xy plot, just to plot the points. Doesn't hurt to throw in the dot dot dot, you never, um, what I want to say is you never know when Lattice is going to be trying to pass additional information down to I'm sorry, when, when, you never know when xy plot is going to want to pass additional information down to panel.xy plot. Um, so it's usually safer to just go ahead and, and let it pass along whatever information it wants to. Uh, and now, um, well, the simple, uh, a relatively simple thing to do, which is not, doesn't, quite answer the question that I asked, but you could make a, a, a rug that would show all the x values. So that would be easy enough. Um, and let me, uh, I guess what I did in the, in the model output here is I let the x axis uh, limits vary. So let me add that, this is the scales argument again. Scales equals list relation, oh sorry, uh, x equals list, so it's a nested list, relation equals free. Okay, so that's getting there, but, but right now I've got a rug, uh, a rug tick mark for every x, um, value. So now we need to use some stuff that 
uh, hopefully you've seen in some of the other lessons here, we need to do some subsetting. So the way to get, uh, first of all, the way to figure out where the missing values are is we can um, make, let's call it uh, which miss is going to tell us, uh, let's see, x, we want to know where y is missing. So, well, we could do, sorry, let me do this. Let me call it uh, y, uh, blah, 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 blah. Now, I'll use, I'll use which miss, okay. So, which ones are missing? They are, uh, the ones where y is an a. Um, and so now if I say I want the x values um, where uh, that correspond to those y values, I can say let's call it x and a or maybe to make it a little bit more easy, x where y is na uh, is just the x values where which miss is true. Okay. So which miss is just a logical vector. For every value of y, it's telling me true or false, that value of y is missing. What I'm doing down here is I'm pulling out uh, all the x values where y was missing. I could have done that in, in one line too, but I don't know, it's kind of a matter of personal preference. I could have said this is x where is n a y, okay? Um, but I don't want to, uh, I, I, let, let's leave it as is here. I, I like, I, it never hurts to break, you know, I think people try to often do too many multi-step computations in one line. Generally, your code's gonna be easier to read if you split things up across uh, multiple lines. Okay, I see the question uh, from Giselle, why are you using the subset operator? Hopefully that'll become clear in a second here. So. I'm trying to pull out only the values of x where y is missing. And then down here, those are the values of x that I want to make the rug for. So now you can see the rug disappeared for all those, you know, for that abundance of values of x. And, and now I've only got a rug tick mark for those values of x such that y was missing. Um, and so in this case, I mean, the reason this is useful is, well, if you just looked in the second and third panel, you might say, oh, maybe there's a bit of a trend here where at lower exposures, the response was more likely to be missing. Um, now that turns out not to be the case because I, I know because I generated the data. So there was there's actually no trend that makes uh, that makes any value more or less likely than, than any other value to be missing. But that's the type of trend you would look for is to say, uh, you know, where where am I am I getting uh, is missingness associated with something else that I have? Because if it is, then it's probably informative. So, so that's a solution to that problem, okay? Uh, any questions on that solution there? Okay, um, I will, uh, let me save this. I'll, uh, I'll post this, uh, 
to I'll post this back up to the website with the edits so you can see that solution. And um, time's up, and then this is a perfect uh, place to take a break uh, because uh, next up is a is another another concept that takes a little bit of uh, explanation before we try to use it. So uh, next time we'll see how to uh, use uh, a very handy panel function called panel.superpose and how that inter interacts with uh, groups. And then we'll also talk about uh, something called lattice themes, which uh, lets you pick uh, default colors and things like that and line types and so forth. Uh, that might be more in line with uh, your, your preference on certain problems. All right, so that's it. I'll hang on the line here for uh, just maybe a couple more minutes if anybody has questions. Um, for those of you li listening to the recording, though, uh, that's it. I'm going to turn it off.